Okay, hi there and welcome back. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about arrays. We're going to introduce this topic. And arrays are a type of non-primitive data type, which means that we can uh, construct them based on combining together primitive data types that we've talked about previously. So let's, what do I mean by this? Well, first, let's just take an example of something that we're already familiar with. Let's imagine that we have a scenario where we're just storing a single grade, a single grade um, and we could do that by something very simple that we've seen before. We can allocate space for a grade um, in, in that way, right? Where this is going to give us one location in memory to store one grade. However, what happens if we have a collection of grades, like things that belong together, grades in a class, right? For example, you have a list, right? You have an array, right? An array. Um, and in that case, we can also do that. We can have, it's a similar way of declaring it, okay, except I am going to provide a size, okay, of how many um, grades that I'm going to store, okay. So, for example, in this case, if it's, if it's five, right, I'm going to store space not just for one grade, okay, but for five grades, okay, I have a space in memory to now store five grades. Um, so the, this is a bit of an analogous to um, thinking of a normal variable, like we think of a, a normal variable being like a tractor trailer truck, right, where it's got one single container here for storing one thing, Right? You think of this case of one piece of information, and you could think of arrays as being like a train, right? where we're storing a whole bunch of things to kind of together in a list. Right? Um, so it could be any, any data type. right? It, it doesn't have to be doubles. It could be integers. It could be other data types. We'll learn how to create data types later on, um, and it could be those uh, as well. Here's a list of integers called my items. Okay. And a couple things to note about that is in computing, right, we almost always start counting by zero, not one. So the first element is actually at location zero, not location one. More on that in, in just a moment, okay? So arrays, these are used all the time. They're used constantly. And so let's just look a little bit at the syntax for how to use them. Okay, and this is similar in a lot of different languages, not, not just C. So the syntax is, we just saw a moment ago, is we've got the data type, we've got the name of the array, okay, and this is the size, right, or the number of elements, okay, inside of square uh, brackets, square brackets. We do need to know the size when we're declaring, okay, so the size needs to be known up front, and it's, um, it's a fixed size. We're gonna, we'll learn later on about how it happens if we want to adjust the size as the program's running, which is a bit more complicated. All right, so let's look at an example here. Here we see an example where on this line, we're looking at the declaration of an integer array. Okay, we're looking at the declaration of an integer array. And that gives us space, okay, space to store three integers in memory. Okay, store, to store three integers in memory. These three lines here are showing our initialization, are showing our initialization of the array. Now I'd like to point out here the syntax, right, for how we go about doing that, right? Notice that here in the square brackets, okay, in the square brackets, we're specifying which element, which location of the array do we want to access, whether for reading or writing. In this case, we're, it's on the left side of the equal sign, so we're writing to it. And we're saying the, the location, the spot in the zero location, right, we start counting at zero, we start counting at zero, we're going to write this 122 here in location zero, in location zero, okay? Then we continue on, right, location one, we see that the next line we're going to write 119, and location 2, we're writing 117. Now, please keep in mind, right, this is a common, common, common uh, problem that people make, is the size of the array is size 3, right? We have the size here is size 3. However, the last element, 
the one at the very end of the array is in location two, not in location three. Okay, because we start counting at zero. We start counting at zero. You know, you might ask yourself, why do we start counting in zero? Well, you know, because everything's in binary, right? And so we think of the smallest thing we could store with, you know, the, if we have um, a certain number of bytes for storing information, right? A binary number of all zeros is the smallest thing that we can represent. So there's there's rationale in the history of in of why these things have occurred. Okay. Um, all right, so uh, if we look at this example here, we say, well, how many elements in memory does this array um, declaration create, right? How many elements in memory does this array declaration create? Well, the key thing here is looking at the size when we're declaring the array, and that's four, okay? What happens is in memory, right, we're having space for four items, right? This is, this is index zero, index one, index two, and index three, Okay, so when we say years array zero, years array one, years array two, years array three, it's specifying which one of those numbers do we want. And in this case, we're initializing 1999 here in location zero, 2012 in location one, and 2025 in location um, two. And we don't know what the value is here in location three because we didn't initialize it. Okay, as we saw before, this can be whatever kind of junk happens to be sitting in that memory location. Okay, that's why it's dangerous and you don't want to use it unless it's initialized. Okay, um, so let's take a look now at um, how we could go about, like let's take a look at a real example uh, and let's just say, well, let's interpret it. What is this doing, right? What is this code doing? What would be the output, okay? Um, so I think it's, it's helpful is to first read through an example and make sure you kind of interpret what it's doing and then we can kind of create some real things later on. Okay, so we're creating here an array that has th uh, three elements, okay, called user vowels, right? So we're going to have index 0, 1, and 2, okay? And we initialize here, okay, we're initializing here, um, and we're initializing this so that this location is value 3, this one's value 6, and this is value 8, okay. And now we're doing a little bit of manipulation of the arrays. So we see down here, this location since it's on the right hand side of the equal sign, we are reading that value. So we're saying, well, what's the value in location zero? It's three plus one. And then we're writing that back to location zero. Okay, so this is gonna get updated to value four. Okay. And then at the bottom here, we're reading location two, which is value eight. We're adding two to it. So that's gonna be 10. And then we're writing it back to location two. So this one's going to become 10. Now this last part here, if we take a look, a look at that for loop, what is that doing, right? Well, that loops, we can say i goes from zero, right? It iterates zero and it goes till it's, you know, less than number of elements. The number of elements is three, right? It's not less than or equal to, it's less than. So it's gonna count, i is gonna go zero, then one, then two. When i is three, the loop fails, that condition fails and we leave the loop, okay? So this here is printing each element of the array, right? So we're basically printing the array out to the screen. So what does this print? It prints four, six, and 10. This would be the answer to that problem. Okay, let's do another one. Um, so in this example, right, it starts off being really similar. We're, we're initializing, or we're, I'm sorry, we're declaring an array called user vowels that has three elements, same as last time, index zero, one, and two, right? Because we have an array of size three. Um, we're initializing it here to two, four, and nine, okay? And then here we're reading location two, which is nine, and we're writing nine to location zero. Okay, and then here we're reading location one, which is four, 
and we're writing that to location two. So this becomes four. So the end thing that's printed, this is printing the entire array, that for loop. The end result is nine, four, four. Okay. Now the next thing I want to show you here is I want us to just focus on this here, this initialization. And I want to show you one other way we can do this. So notice here, what we're really doing is this top part is we're declaring, we're declaring an array of size three, right? We're declaring an array of size three up here. Um, and then we're initializing it um, down below. And I'm going to combine all of those. I'm going to show you how we can do this in one single line, okay, of code. Now, it works either way. So you do whatever you want, but I want to show you how to do it. It's something you should know and, and definitely see. So we're going to, we're going to show how we can declare an array of size three and initialize it to uh, two, four, nine in one line. Okay. And to do that, let me just free up some space here to type. I'm going to create my array user vals okay size three okay and in the curly brackets i can initialize the array to whatever i want right and so the pre i'll keep the numbers the same as the previous example we initialized it to two four nine right i would do two four and nine. Okay. would do the exact same thing. It just condenses it down in one line. Okay. This syntax of initializing it like that using the curly brackets, we can only do that at the, on the same line that we declare the same line that we declare the variable, uh, the array. Okay. Uh, part of that has to do with how memory is allocated, and it's a bit of a longer um, story. But the um, this is a you know if we the syntax here that will work, we can declare and initialize an array like that on, on one line if we choose to. Okay. Uh, otherwise, you can do it similar to the other example. They, they both work. Okay. Um, so I did kind of point this out a little bit before, but I want to make sure that we uh, focus on it because it's a common way in which we're looping through an array. Um, this type of for loop, of setting up a for loop like this, is a very common way for iterating through an array. Uh, we already saw it a couple times, I just want to point out why. Okay, well we know an array starts, like if we have an array, as we've seen, it starts counting at zero right? And it goes all the way till the last element is, is um, in index num elements minus one, right? Because this, the, the last location, this last spot in the array, this very last spot here is the size minus one or the number elements minus one, right? We saw that before, right? If we declared an array of size three, the last element is the location two because we're starting to count the reason because we're starting to count at zero. Um, so um, we make sense to set up a loop this way because we start, we start here, okay? I is gonna start there and it's gonna walk every single element in the array, or i is going to go from 0, 1, 2, and we can use it to address every single element in the array, and it's going to end here at num elements minus 1. It's going to be the last thing that it hits, right? And the reason that's the last one is we're using less than here. We're using less than there, right? As soon as i equals the number of elements, that condition fails, we leave the loop, okay? So it's a common pattern. We see that all the time. We're, we see that all the time come up um, in terms of uh, having loops like that when we're iterating, right? We're walking through an array. Okay. A very, very common mistake, super easy to make, is to go past the end of an array. Okay. Is to go past the end of the array. So if we look at this example here, right, remember the array 
The size here is three. Okay, the size here is three. This is that we declared space for an array for three numbers for three integers. Okay, and this line here is causing a problem. Okay, and that we are writing. Okay, we're writing past the end of an array. We're writing in this location. That's actually the next item, right? Um, this is something that is um, you. You can sometimes you'll see an error that will come up saying that you're like accessing an array like out of bounds. So if you see an error that's referring to, okay. You could also see this in the context of something called a buffer overflow. Okay, where buffer is kind of referring to the array in this in this context. And you're going past the end. This type of um, sometimes you won't get an error at all. Um, you're you're writing over something beyond the end of an array. And you're you're effectively writing over some other data, and it's very dangerous to do. Um, the reason you can kind of get away with this sometimes and not have it just crash on on you or, or generate an error is because um, it's a it's a performance thing in terms of allowing you to do that and not having to check everything and making the code run faster than it otherwise would. And this is honestly this is a, a popular way of um, of security problems in terms of a form of attack, a common way for people to exploit trying to write things. Um, in locations that they're not supposed to by purposely running, um, doing things to programs to force it to write information uh, beyond the end of an array. It's a, f a common way of trying to attack systems, uh, which is not something I expect you to know, but just kind of uh, point out um, this type of buffer. It's called a buffer overflow attack, and it's uh, been around for a long time. But from what do you need to know for this? Okay, so in the context of from an intro course is let's just point out the, the essentials, right? First, keep in mind, right, that here, the size of the array, okay, the size of the array, we want to make sure that if uh, that we're always the last thing that we're indexing is one less than the size of the array because we have to make space for starting to count at zero, okay? Uh, and keep in mind, right, that um, weird things can happen if you go beyond the end of an array, right? You, um, sometimes you actually want to get an error. It's helpful to get an error so you can fix it. Um, but sometimes you won't. Um, it's just considered it's dangerous and it can be unpredictable when you run your programs, okay? For the fact that data is being stored sequentially in memory, right? We're seeing that here. If these are the addresses in memory here on the left, Data is being stored sequentially, and when you go past the end of an array, you're hitting a location that you're not supposed to, right? You're hitting somewhere that you're not supposed to be writing to or reading from, okay? And that's very dangerous to um, to do that, okay? All right, we'll stop there. We'll practice more arrays in the next video, and so stay tuned. And thanks for watching.